Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video, I'm going to cover object-oriented programming in Python. So we'll cover classes, objects, inheritance, and other related concepts. So first I'll explain some concepts of object-oriented programming, and then I actually have some code and we're going to walk through that is going to actually make it a lot clearer how these actually work. So encapsulation is basically combining data and actions into the same block of code called a class. So a class is a block of code that is used to instantiate an object. Or you could think of it as a recipe that is used to uh, bake a pie. So you follow the recipe, you can make as many pies as you want from that recipe. That's what a class is. You can make as many objects as you want from that class. So encapsulation includes all of the data and actions together in the same block of code. Composition is the concept that objects can contain other objects in their instance variables. And this is called a has a relationship. So this is really simple, it may sound confusing, but a car has tires. So if you're modeling a program for a car, and you need to say that a car has tires, and then you want a tire object to have things like a brand name, um, the dimensions of the tire, the size of the tire, the tread, all these things. So you have a tire object, and a car has a tire, and that's all this is saying, that a tire is part of the composition of a car. Inheritance. So this diagram on the right here kind of explains inheritance in a nutshell. It's basically the idea that you have a hierarchy of classes. So you may have a life form, and every life form has a lifespan. So you have this attribute under life form. And then under life form, there's plants and there's animals. So let's say you have an animal life form, and an animal life form has a weight. Uh, so that attribute is under animal. And basically, every single one of these types of animals all has a lifespan and a weight that it can access through its parent class. This is a parent class. So it's inheriting all of these attributes, plus it adds on some specific attributes of, of its own class. So a reptile may have number of legs and and a boolean for has teeth or not. And then fish could be salt, salt water or freshwater fish, so is salt water or length. And a bird, well, birds are basically separated by perching birds and non-perching birds. And then you also have wingspan. So you may have different attributes for birds. And plus a bird has a weight and a bird has a lifespan. So you inherit all of the parent's attributes plus the specific attributes of that child class. And this is called inheritance. Abstraction is having an abstract class as a template only that cannot be instantiated into an object. It serves as a template or a placeholder for you to write a concrete class based on that. And it's really there to just to define what methods or functions that you need in that class to implement it. So polymorphism is really a $10 word for a $1 idea. It's a lot simpler than it sounds. So the, the idea is really that you're going to have a lot of child classes accessing functions of parent classes, and you just want these parent class to be able to execute those functions, regardless of which child class is calling it. So if I call a get weight function in the animal class, it shouldn't matter whether or not a fish is calling get weight or a reptile is calling get weight. It always just returns the weight for that animal. In other words, the get weight function is class agnostic. As long as it is an animal or a descendant of the animal class, you can use that get weight function. Some advantages of object oriented programming it reduces the amount of code you have to write. And that is because it is modular. So you modularize your code into classes, and then you can reuse those classes in other programs, in other modules, etc. So, for example, you write a student class. Guess what? Not only can you reuse that student class in other programs you write, you can also share it on GitHub and other people can use your student class in their program. So the concept of sh uh, code reusability and sharing code uh, gets a lot more mileage out of the code you write. So it really does reduce the amount of code. And it also enables you to use existing code. It also models the real world. As I just explained in the example with animals, uh, with cars and tires, these are objects and this is how the real world works. 
Although it is noun-based, so typically in object-oriented programming, you have objects for nouns, and then you have functions or methods for verbs or actions. This is basically models the real world, though. It's easier to understand, debug, maintain, and extend your code. If I want to add an additional function onto Reptile, I can easily do that. Uh, just using the Reptile class, it doesn't have to affect any of my other code. It's easier to debug because I'm debugging a much smaller uh, block of code. It's easier to understand, maintain the code. So these are some advantages of object-oriented programming. Now let's look at some actual code and implementation. So we're going to start with a shape class. We have class, shape, and then a colon, and then within that we have different functions. I started by writing an init function, which is a constructor, and we always have the first parameter is self, and then we want to pass in a color. If no color is passed in, we'll assign none to color, but hopefully somebody will pass in a color to the constructor when they create a new shape. There's one function in here, and it's called getColor, and all it does is return the color. So every shape has a color. And then we also have a two-string method, underscore, underscore, str, underscore, underscore. So this is Python's string method. In other words, it returns a string representation of a shape. We can define that to be whatever we want. What we're going to return is just the color and then the word shape. So red shape, green shape. That's it. So we return this string. That is our string representation of a shape. And for a lot of classes you write, you'll probably want to have a two-string method that returns some sort of string representation of the class. So to use our shape class, we can just have shape equals shape, and then in parentheses we're going to pass in the string red, which is our color. So we haven't said what kind of shape this is yet, but we don't have to at this point because a shape is just a generic parent class. And then we can print shape is shape.getColor. So using our variable here, our instance variable, which is called shape with the lowercase s, we can call the methods of the shape class. And we're going to get the color of this shape that we instantiated. And this shape with the capital S basically calls the constructor or the init function within the shape class and passes in the variable red, the string red. So that's it. It's pretty simple. That's our shape class. So let's run that and then you can see it should print out red shape. So shape is red. So next, I wrote a rectangle class. Now rectangle class inherits from shape. So in other words, it's going to inherit these attributes from shape. Plus we're going to have some of our own attributes for a rectangle. Notably, you can imagine a rectangle has a length and a width, right? So in our constructor, we want when someone creates a new rectangle, we, we want our constructor to have, well, it has to have self, and then we want people to pass in a color, and then we'll use that color, as you can see here, to call super.init, and then we'll pass the color to that. In other words, we're calling the parent class's constructor and passing the, the color that we just received to that parent class's constructor. So that's basically setting the color attribute in the parent class shape for this rectangle. And then we have length and width, so we're going to set self.length equal to length, self.width equal to width, which is the values that we passed in. So as a constructor, we've basically set the color in the parent class, the length and width in the rectangle class. So we have all three attributes set. That's all the constructor does. Next we have a get area, which just returns self.length times self.width, and a get parameter, which returns a formula for the perimeter, calculates it out. And then we have a string method, and instead of just saying red shape, we want to say self.getColor. What Python will do is first it's going to check when it sees this in the rectangle class. Oh, self is a rectangle. Is there a function in the rectangle class called getColor? No, there's not. Then it will look in rectangle's parent class, which is shape. Oh, is there a function called getColor? Yes, there is. And then it will return the color. So our two-string method is basically going to have color, and then a space, and then the length, an x, 
and then the width, and then the name of the shape. In other words, the name of the rectangle class, which is rectangle. So I also wrote a circle class. We'll look through that. From math, import pi. I put that before the circle class because I want to use the pi constant for calculations in my circle class. Now I have a class called circle, and it also inherits from shape. Our constructor, again, we receive the color and a radius. We pass the color up to the parent class using the super keyword. And then we set the radius of the circle. And then when you call get area, you get the radius squared times pi. Pi r squared calculates the area of the circle. And 2 pi r calculates the get perimeter return value. In other words, circle has different calculations. It has a different attribute radius instead of a length and width, and it has the same two functions, get area and get perimeter, that we had for rectangle. However, the calculation inside of them is different. So now if we want to use these classes, so let's create a new rectangle. Rect equals rectangle blue. We pass in the color blue. Six is the length and four is the width. And now that we have this new rectangle called rect, we're going to print rect is and then we'll get the color with area, and then we'll print the area, and perimeter, and then we'll get the perimeter. So that's what we're going to do, is just print out a line of text that describes the basic data for our rectangle. And then the same thing for the circle. Let's save this and run it. There, we have shape is red, rect is blue with area 24 and perimeter 20, and circ is green with area of 78 point something and perimeter of 31 point something. So this all works fine. We can see now that we have a shape class as our parent class, a rectangle and a circle are our child classes. But we may want to also maybe have a print shape data function where we can print out a description of that shape in a different format. So I wrote this little function. It's not inside of any of the classes. It's in my program, in the root of the program. And then we're going to print the shape, which is the name of the shape, circle or rectangle, or just shape. And then print color, self.getColor. It's going to grab the color and print that. It's going to self.getArea and self.getPerimeter. Now remember when we talked about polymorphism. Here you can see polymorphism at play. Because when we call this function with a shape, be it a circle or a square, it doesn't matter, that becomes self. And self can get area and get perimeter and get color. It can access all of these same attributes. And these functions here don't even care what the class of that object is. So if we pass in a square, it's going to use the squares get area and get perimeter functions. And it'll use shapes get color. And then the same with circle, it'll use the circles get area and get perimeter functions, and it'll use the shapes get color. So this is basically an example of polymorphism at work. We can also print rect is a type rect, and then name. So let's save that and run it. So you can see we're printing a rect is a rectangle, circ is a circle. Now let's try out our new print shape data function my new shape equals rectangle and it's yellow and it's 17 by 9 and then I call print shape data on my new shape and then here I want to show you something else we're gonna print the type of my new shape and also print my new shape now when we print my new shape that's gonna basically call the two string method the string method which gives us a string rep representation of my shape so let's try this out here you can see shape, rectangle, color yellow, area 153, perimeter 52. Now, when we call the um, type of shape, this is what we get for type. When we call type name, we get just rectangle. And this is our string method for rectangle objects. We get yellow 17 by 9 rectangle. So that is our string representation for the rectangle class. So one last note here about classes. Normally when you use classes, you would want to put them in a separate file or module and then import that. So what you probably want to do is cut this out and replace it with a from shape class import star. And then we'll have a separate shape class that has the shape class in it. And then we can save that. 
we can save this and you'll find that the program still runs fine. Everything still works. What we've done is basically taken out the shape class, moved it into a shape underscore class dot py module that saved into the same directory as classes dot py and we put this from shape class import star. That way our, our class is actually stored in a separate file. And then we would want to do the same thing with rectangle and circle so that the rectangle and circle class is each inside of its own module or its own file stored separately. And that's actually the best way to modularize your code. That concludes this video on object-oriented programming. I hope it was helpful for you. If so, please click a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.